Hello everyone, this is Diane. This is the journal that I made for myself and maybe in an upcoming chatty video, I will talk to you about why I am keeping so many of the journals that I make these days. This one was made with a really old music book from a school and it's tied with the same muslin tie that the almanac book was tied with. Um, you can see it's quite dirty won't come off. The corners were very, very, very ragged, and I had to force all the layers of cardboard into these um, corners, metal corners, but it really tidied it up nicely. And the back of it has this crease in it, and it's, it's soft, it bends. So there were reasons why I didn't want to put this in my shop because of the condition of the book. But there are also reasons why I wanted to keep it because I love music. And I, I will talk to you about some of my music memories as we go through this book. Here is a piece of the corn seed sack. And it says, Jersey Shore, RD1, Pennsylvania. Member of Pennsylvania Crop Improvement State College, Pennsylvania. I have a nephew that lives in State College as he is a professor at the college, Penn State. There's a pen that I stamped on another piece of this sack fabric. And a vintage price. I left the end papers. You may recall that I had this little sticker here and I said I was going to use my heat gun to try to remove it. And I did. I took it off and I was going to use it in the book somewhere. And then when I put the cover all together, the spot was still there. So I just added it back in where it was. <laughs> American Junior Red Cross. Again, we have wallpaper and a music flash card. I think I must have gotten these in a happy mail in several colors and they're quite big. But I just cut it and uh, made a pocket out of it and I stamped this on vintage music and I have a stamp of Mozart's signature. Added a little ruffle there. This is an ad from a music magazine which I really, I like the shape of it. Makes a great journaling card. And then I used a lot of, of uh, music flashcards, sorry. <clears throat> I have them in many sizes, flashcards and game cards. Um, an accidental in music is a sharp or flat, not given in the key signature. So if you have um, music, a song in the key of C, which has no sharps and no flats, and then you're playing, and they add in a flat or a sharp, that's an accidental. And it can be tricky. If you have a lot of sharps or flats in your piece that you're playing and they either remove one, that there's a natural, you can make a flat or sharp natural, you can remove the sharp or flat or you can add in a sharp or flat and it changes the way you're playing it, at least for a while, a measure or so. And then it change. You can, and then they can change it back. Anyway, that makes playing tricky sometimes. Sometimes I hate accidentals. Sometimes they don't. They don't bother me at all. This is more digital, and this is um, uh, sheet music, Twilight song or something like that. And this is a different one, and this is a different one. So these are three different digitals. I'll try not to say so much about <clears throat> pieces that I used and maybe just share some of my music memories that I might include in this book. I love this vintage crochet trim. My grandmother was my piano teacher, so these are not the books that I used, but these kind of images bring back memories of my piano lessons. This is another pocket that I constructed with multiple pieces. This is paper that was sewn together, and it was a scrap of it. So I use that as a pocket and then I had this little piece of paper that was left from something and I just added that behind it to make two, a double pocket. 
and there's a cluster there. I have not finished off all of my tags. I wanted to finish off the other one that's going to be for sale, but I, I still have some details to do in mine, but that's a piece of scrapbook paper. And another flash card. And then in the little one, I have timpani drums and this little flash card. The letter name of this note is E. Because it's in the bass clef. That means what you're playing with your left hand. Bass clef is below middle C for the most part. This is um, vellum with, this, with the gold music notes. And I put it on blue cardstock and this little tab from a scrap of cardstock that has gold. And this was cut from scrapbook paper. There's a journaling card and this paper, this little piece from a book about music and it has a lady playing a pipe organ. So my grandmother played the organ. She didn't, we didn't have a pipe organ at my church, but she played the organ in my church. And I remember when I was young, I think before I was a teenager or maybe a very young teenager, she got an organ for Christmas, a small home organ. And I was so excited about that. I remember going to her house. They lived across the road and just down. We walked to their house all the time. And we had Thanksgiving at her house. And then they all came, came back over to my house to watch some, to do slides or movies or something that my dad took. We had a screen that he would show things on and I stayed at my grandma's house so I could play around with the organ. <laughs> that was fun. Um, okay, so here's some more vintage embroidery. I love this piece of music or piece of paper. It seems to be, it was in a bunch of music books and stuff from a the estate of a music, a piano teacher. I bought it from someone at a flea market. And it's, so it's a periodical for music teachers. So I thought it was really fun. I <clears throat> folded it up and made a pocket out of it. Vintage wrapping paper. <clears throat> when I was in grade school, or maybe junior high, I took violin lessons for it's either one or two years. <clears throat> I didn't get very far with it because my violin teacher moved over the summer and there was no other violin teacher. So I didn't get to continue, but that's there. I do love violin. I really love the cello, the sound of the cello. Here's another um, master board that I did on graph paper. So it's lightweight. And it just has a bunch of things collaged in this little piece of German scrap with a girl singing. There's a postage stamp there. And here is a violin card or viola card on the back. Oh, wait, this is two cards. There, I want the viola in here. The stamp there. It's an interesting looking music page, isn't it? It's the three bears. Each one is sing singing their part. Some the stationary cluster. Another flashcard. And I will probably add more to some of these pockets. I didn't actually go through and do the finishing touches on this journal. Why the piano is the ideal instrument to study. This is a stamp, stamped image that was in my stash. It says just a little something. Annie Piani. I am just an old upright piano, but I am in good condition and well-tuned, and everyone says I have a lovely tone. That's how I learned to play the piano. My grandmother had a spinet piano, but at my house we had an old upright, and that's where I practiced. Love this vintage trim. And this old envelope is from Bronson Brothers. 
hardware, stoves, and tinware. Looks like it's pretty old. The address is Mrs. Casey Stewart. City. That's all it says. Oh, look at the back. I can't read the writing, and then they're scribbling on top of the writing. And then this is part of that long folded up card that you would put on your piano to help you learn what the notes are. I cut it up into tags and pockets. Was this here or here? I think it was here. And here's one of those treble clef paper clips from Cynthia. You can see it there. Have a vintage um, bill head here, Berry Dry, Berry Dry Goods Company. And I added this piece that was cut from a vintage greeting card. Twilight Time was the name of that song. This pocket was from a vintage photo little album with the plastic comb binding that you used to get back in the day. You could um, have your pictures developed and then, and then they would come in these. Maybe you had to pay extra to have that. I don't know. But I took the pictures out and I and the book was still together. So it is a pocket and I can open that up in writer glue. And uh, there's a postage stamp there, but I put this treble clef on to hold it close so it doesn't just flap. Up here is just a vintage drug store company, drug store label, elixir of iron quinine and strychnine, but it was bent and fragile so it was just about ready to tear so I glued it in there rather than lose it. Now I put this in because I played the piano for the school chorus and one year the band director needed a xylophone player and because I play the piano so I knew the notes I could read music and these keys on a xylophone are laid out just like a piano keyboard with the sharps and flats up here so I would be able to easily play it. And so he really had to do some talking to get me to do it because I didn't want to. I said I would do it for the one concert, just one concert. <laughs> and he said, okay. So I did. I don't remember any of the songs we played, but I did it. And then his wife came up to me. I didn't know her. I'd never seen her before. She came up to me after the concert and was um, raving about what a great job I did. And I knew I could see through that. I mean, I was very, very gullible. I'm still gullible, but I was very, very gullible, but I could see through that. She, he sent her to me because who pays attention to the xylophone player? <laughs> I didn't have any solos or anything, <laughs> but she was trying to make me want to stay in the band and play, but I didn't. I only did it for the one concert but I had to include that. The same type of pocket that was in the other journal, and I put a bunch of my game cards and flash cards in this pocket. I just wanted to keep a bunch of them. I put one of those stickers in there too, so I can use it somewhere in the journal. And this piece has Beethoven stamped on it. And there's another xylophone. There's a violin. Love that picture. There's my stamp with the composer's names and another piece cut from a greeting card. There's a half and half cardboard lid that would fold over the top of the bottle. This was pleated so it would fold down. And I showed you in a previous video, if you didn't see it, uh, this was from the Whiting Opera House. I don't know where it is, Salina Street, but I don't know what city or state. And it was probably in a box of stuff that I bought. But it's, it's the advertising on here is for a music store. But this was the ticket envelope. And I did not even know that there were ticket pieces in there for an opera for 1930, April 25th, 1930. 
I love that they are in there. There's a uh, early brass section. So these are, that's an early cornet and slide trumpet. And this is called a serpent. I can see why. And the sackbut, which is kind of like a trombone. And whatever that is. Uh, bassoon? No. It's got a little reed up here and then it's connected to this long horn. Anyway. There's a uh, flashcard, a uh, stencil, I mean, and this little plastic treble clef. Embroidery piece, an embroidered trim. There's my piece of the vintage eyes, metal eyes. Vintage wrapping paper. For my pocket, I used a keyboard stamp and then the same stamp but I featured more music notes on this because it was a stamp this big and I could decide what part I wanted stamped. And I used Beethoven's and Mozart's signature stamps that I have here. Two girls at the piano. So this has three pockets like the one I showed you in the other book, a fermata, which is a hold. And there's a piano keyboard. And there's a piano. And there's a piano. This is from Vintage Sheet Music. I just glued it down because it's very fragile. Little bits of embroidery there. Love this vintage embroidered trim. I used to love music class in school. We had these kinds of songbooks, not this, but we had songbooks that had pictures and I just loved music class. I loved the singing and when we did spring concerts and whatnot. There's another film envelope and I had to glue this one closed because it had come apart at the bottom. I stamped my music notes there, and that piece is cut from scrapbook paper. So, Mr. Sweatland came to my house when I was in the summer before I entered sixth grade, I believe, because that was the age he tried to recruit people to learn instruments. And he sold instruments. He had a music store right in Athens here. But I lived out in East Smithfield, which is out in the country. But anyway, there's a pocket and a card with a boy playing the violin and a Quizmo card. And I thought everybody had to learn an instrument. My older brothers played um, the clarinet and the flute. And I needed an instrument too. Well, I would have wanted one of those. But I had to play something different. So... He talked me into the trumpet. He said, girls can play the trumpet. This is an, a vintage um, telephone dial, but I think it might have been for like a pay phone or something that would get heavy use because it's plastic, not paper. And I glued it to cardstock and then added that digital. That's a vintage sticker. And this is a little notepad. And it says, music, the greatest good that mortals know and all of heaven we have below by Joseph Addison. So, oh, and it has a vintage bread. So my parents bought me a trumpet and I took trumpet lessons. I tried to, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And finally, I think, was it Mr. Swetland himself that was giving me lessons? I don't even remember, but I think it was him. And he told me that I didn't have the lung capacity. I didn't have the breath to play a trumpet after he convinced my parents to buy a trumpet. Had it for years. I mean, it was in our house and never, never used. I sold it when I was a grown up <laughs> to my neighbor who played the trumpet. Um, this is a page from a children's encyclopedia about orchestra and there's a clarinet. So my grandmother, played the clarinet, and apparently my grandfather did too, but I never heard him play the clarinet. 
after he had died, my father told me that Grandpa played the clarinet too. And my grand, my dad loves music. I've talked about that. My dad and I share a love for music, but his mother was a music teacher. When I was in kindergarten, she was my music teacher, maybe first grade too. But everybody called her Mrs. Passmore, and I couldn't call her that, but I didn't want to call her Grandma, so I didn't call her anything. <laughs> but I remember her playing the piano, and, and we kids were walking around the room with rhythm instruments, making a racket, I'm sure. But it was quite thrilling for me to have my grandmother there teaching music. Uh, she went to, she had a degree. She must have gotten the degree in the late 20s or early 30s. My dad was born in 1935 and his sister was born in 34. And she had already had her music degree because she did that before she got married. So I had a music teacher for a grandmother. That's from a millinery hat, a vintage millinery. It's millinery, you know, it's a millinery flower. <laughs> There's Mozart, and I stamped his signature. Mozart is a stamp. I gave myself some Mallow Cup coins, so I can journal about that, too. It's another good memory with my grandpa. My husband loved music, too. He didn't play any instruments, and he couldn't carry a tune, but he loved to listen. This is from a vintage magazine. It says, lovely as a melody. I'm glad I finally had a place to put it. This is a copy of a vintage music magazine, I think it was, January 1916. Vintage wrapping paper. Maybe that's the bassoon. I don't know. I cannot remember some of those instruments. There's a harp. And I can just, I'll glue this label down somewhere. I can't write on the back of it. I could if I glued it to paper, but it's stamped onto some fragile paper. Life looks beautiful on you. There's another harp on a journal card. This is from Stamperia, and I'm hoping that the next journal project will be the Stamperia music papers, but I'll decide that after I clean up my room. And I got this recently. I think this must have come from Susan also, and someone, I didn't know what it was, but it has denominations of money, dollars and cents, and someone told me it's a coin wrapper. So I'm going to assume they were right. But I think it's really cool, and I put it in here because I want to keep it. These are music notes that I stamped in different colors and then cut out and glued on. This is a vintage piece that I've wanted to use for a long time, and it had curved pieces that came out from it and this dangly bit. I think it would go around the, ne the neckline of it blouse and it's got the little jet beads on it so I just cut off this piece and finally used it now it's cut now it'll get used this is a fun envelope National Stockman and Farmer Pittsburgh Pennsylvania and I cannot read the blurred date Can't read that one either. And this one is another pocket that has two pieces put together. This is actually part of a vintage greeting card. Someone saved just this piece and it has the satin ribbon. They must have wanted that ribbon. So they saved just that piece, and it was a layered card. It had two layers, but you couldn't open it because of the ribbon. So I sewed around it to seal it, 
make it one piece and it's a pocket there. And I added this vintage piece here and that stencil. So in the little pocket, I have a double base and this little merchandise tag. And in this one, I have a collaged card and a flash card. And this one I talked about on a video. This is not a music record. It must be spoken because it's Get More From Your Kenmore. This record tells you how. Also, here facts you should know about an important new Kenmore service. Play this record at 33 and a third RPM. And, but it looks, it's a record. So I thought this was great for a music book and it gave me a place to use it. I've had it for a while and I just stamped this on a leftover tab from a file folder. This is the original library card and pocket and this is torn. So I'll probably put a little piece of cellophane on there, the old cellophane tape. And there's the card. The first time this book was taken out was 1948. Phew. All right. So this one will stay in my collection. And I hope that you enjoyed watching it and hearing some of my stories of music memories. I'll see you in the next video. And I hope you're having a creative day. Put some music on and dance today. Bye.